Well now, our next story takes us north to meet a sculptor and painter named Christy Keeney, whose work graces homes from the palatial to the ordinary. He first made his name in London, where he studied at the Royal College of Art and where his work found favour with Prince Charles. Anyway, Christy is not one to be impressed by fame or fortune, and he has come back to his roots to sculpt, paint and live near where he grew up in Letterkenny. Eileen Magner has been to meet him. Even when we would sit around the table, I remember when we were kids and there would be like eight of us sitting around and we'd be constantly saying to each other, stop looking at me, you know, stop looking at me. It's like, Kieran's looking at me. <laughs> you just had no space and when we were, and you'd go out into the town, like, you know, you were always young, Keeney. I'm heavy loaded, baby. I'm booked. I gotta go crying, baby. Young Keeney grew up to be an artist, a musician, and a family man. But the issue of identity has always been important in his life and his art. Christy Keeney credits his mother with first encouraging him to paint, but it was a school trip to an art gallery in Dublin when he was 15, which really opened his eyes to modern art and influenced the style he would become famous for after his studies in Ireland and at the Royal College of Art in London. I saw this uh, piece of sculpture. Uh, it was a, a cello a, made in bronze, but it had been sliced up into many segments and it was rearranged. And the artist was a guy called Arman. He's a French-born uh, American artist. And his idea was like to uh, destruct, destroy things, but then reconstruct them. And uh, by when you reconstruct it, it becomes something completely different. And I just love this piece of art that was in this gallery. Fly, fly away, fly away, oh glory, when, when I was here, uh, I was just one of the keenies. <laughs> you know, we've got a big family and. But when you go to somewhere like London, uh, for the first time you're, you're treated as an individual and that's kind of a scary thing because you don't have that sort of security blanket around you with your family. So I had to kind of grow up very rapidly and uh, I think that change where I started to formulate my own opinions about who I was uh, affected the work I was doing as well and I, it started to grow from there really. And um, I worked in various studios in London and because at the time London was going through a recession, there were lots of empty studio spaces and I was a part of this group who took over a school in, inner, in the Elephant Castle and uh, we all uh, used the classrooms as studio spaces. I was there for five years and it, and it was one of the best times I've ever had because it gave me the freedom to be able to explore and experiment with my work without having the pressure to sell the work because I wasn't selling anything at the time because I was making music, I was playing in a band and I, at the weekends I was able to uh, make enough money to survive during the week and I spent a lot of time drinking tea with the rest of the students and uh, artists and uh, just having a great time partying. And <laughs> But did you not want to sell your work? Well, the thing is about art is like, uh, yeah, when you have a passion, you shouldn't try to make any money out of it because I think that but that's when I, that's the way I used to think. You know, I, I was very sort of militant about the way I used to think about art, and you know, people who make money from art are charlatans. You know, and and but when I had my daughter, sh she came along um, uh, in ninety six. 98. My wife's going to kill me because I can't remember. <laughs> so, anyway, when she came along, I, I thought to myself, I've got to make some money. I must ask you about some of the commissions that you've done. In particular, you've, you, you did one for Prince Charles. That was uh, uh, about 1986, uh, during the time when I was having my degree show in London. He kind of saw the work and he said, um, he said it's very difficult to get some. He said it's very difficult to get one, someone to do one's head for them these days. And uh, I said to him, "I'll do it if you want me to." I just sort of thought, 
well, I'll do it if you want. And uh, he kind of laughed, but I looked behind him at my head of department and he was going, Kenneth, <laughs> don't say that to the Royal. Uh, so anyway, um, I ended up uh, having to go to St. James's Palace then about two months later, uh, and I took a camera with me and photographed him um, from all different angles, because that's when you're doing a head, you have to get the top, the bottom, and the sides, and the back. And he, I had him standing on this chair by one of the windows, because the, that's where the light was best. And um, he was saying to me something like, oh, I hope no one sees me standing in this chair. They think I've gone crackers, you know. I spent 17 years in London, and eventually, in 2001, returned back here to set up my own studio. London was getting very difficult to live in because of the spaces, the studio spaces were getting difficult to find. Um, rents were going up. And my daughter was uh, six at the time, and we kind of felt that she might have a nicer life over here. At the time, property was pretty cheap, and we, we saved up for this plot of land. I do these flat heads now, and um, when I, they, they sell very well because they're cheap, because they're just rolled out clay, and then I, I just draw the face on, and uh, but then when I start to cut them up for other pieces, uh, it takes on a totally different sort of form or vision. And it's like the thing that Armin was doing, destruction and construction. That, that whole idea is still part of the way I think. When you put paint onto a canvas, it's very immediate. You know, things start. I never, I never plan the paintings. So I, I just slap on paint and then it just sort of, I feel where it's going. And I try to follow where it's going, really. Uh, I don't know. It's a bit like uh, when somebody's writing a, a novel, they, they start off and they don't know where it's going to end up. <coughs> um, so that's the way I do it. I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing, you know, and um, if it carries on like this, I'll be very happy to. I mean, the future is trying to find out what my works, how it will develop, you know. I, I don't know where it's going to go, but uh, I have no big plans. Like, you know, and you're whatever. happy and content doing it here? Yeah, very much. Lovely area. Everybody should come to Donegal. To my sweet home, Chicago. Great stuff. Sweet home Donegal, more like it. If you'd like to get some more information about Christie's work, you'll find it on his website, and his website address is on your screens now. Well, that's it from us for this evening. We'll be taking to the stage on Monday, treading the boards, if you like, metaphorically speaking. Idhra Dalin, Onahenyar of Wirin, Agus O'Kaharlach, Iwahagwiv, Agus Bunigi Thanivas, and Derish Akhna.